Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, I'm going to tackle a topic that trips up many people when they take cybersecurity certification exams, the Bell LaPadula model. Now, this model seems intimidating because it's academic and theoretical, but it really doesn't need to be very scary. I'm going to break down Bell LaPadula in simple terms and give you the two important rules that you need to remember to answer exam questions. The first thing that you need to know is that the Bell LaPadula model is all about the confidentiality of information. You might already know that the world of information security is focused on three main goals, protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information and resources. Bell LaPadula focuses on that first goal of confidentiality. This means that we're trying to prevent unauthorized access to information or that we're trying to keep our secrets secret. The second important thing to understand is that the Bell LaPadula model is really talking about a very high security environment that uses something that we call multi-level security. That means that we have an environment where individuals have security clearances and are only allowed to access information that matches their security clearance level. The most common example of this is a military organization where information is classified into levels like confidential, secret, and top secret. Before we dive into the rules of the Bell LaPadula model, I want to warn you that this is very much a theoretical model. Trying to actually fully implement this model in the real world would be very difficult, if not impossible. I'll explain why in a few minutes, but the fact that we can't really fully implement the Bell LaPadula model doesn't mean that it isn't useful to us in the real world. The model is helpful because it gives us a way to think about the threats to the confidentiality of our information. As we work through the two rules of the Bell LaPadula model, I'm going to use an example that I'd like you to follow along with. If you watched my explainer video on the BIBA integrity model, this example will already be familiar to you. I'm going to use the same example to help you understand the differences between Bell LaPadula and BIBA. Imagine that you're a military commander and you're planning the invasion of a make-believe country called Aragon. The invasion is going to take place next week and you're working with your team to develop the plans. You've decided that those plans are very sensitive, so you're classifying them as top secret. Now, of course, you want to protect the confidentiality of those plans because you don't want your enemy to find out that you're coming. In this picture, all the people in green are in on the plan. They all have top secret clearances. Now, of course, there are a lot of other people around who don't know about the plan. They only have secret clearances, and they aren't allowed to know what's going on. They're shown here in orange. Now imagine that each one of these groups has a shared to-do list for next week. The top secret to-do list says, invade Aragon. The secret to-do list says, finish security awareness training. You want to make sure that everyone who is in on the plan knows that it's going to take place. The first rule of the Bell LaPadula model is the simple security property. It says that someone should not be able to read information at a security level that's higher than their clearance. Or in our example, someone with a secret clearance shouldn't be able to read top secret information. Now, that probably makes a lot of sense to you. After all, it's the intuitive rule that we think of when we think of information security. People shouldn't be able to see information that they're not allowed to see. Because this rule implements that basic principle of security, we give it an important name, the simple security property. Now, coming back to our military planning example, this would mean that we don't want our orange low security staff here to read the green top secret file that says we're launching a top secret invasion. We want them to think that our plan for next week is just to do security awareness training. We can summarize this simple security rule in three words. No read up. We don't want anyone reading information classified at a higher level than their security clearance because that would violate the principle of confidentiality. Now, before I explain the second rule of the Bell LaPadula model, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. 
Also, if you're enjoying the Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos when they come out. The second rule of the Bell Lapagula model is the STAR security property. The STAR security property says that someone should not be able to write information to a lower security level than their clearance. For example, a user with a top secret clearance should not be able to write information to a secret file. We do this to prevent information leakage. We don't want someone who knows very sensitive information to intentionally or accidentally write that information to a file with a lower security level. In this case, if we allow someone with a top secret clearance to write information in a secret file, they might write a file that says that next week is our secret invasion, and they might write that in a place where people with only a secret clearance can read it. That would be a confidentiality violation. We can also summarize the STAR security rule in three words. No write down. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Bell Lapagula model doesn't really work so well in the real world, and it's because of this STAR security property. It's pretty easy to enforce the simple security property, and it's the basic design principle behind most information systems. It's hard to operate a business, though, if you don't allow senior leaders to write to files that are accessible by lower-level staff. The STAR security property makes sense in the world of theory, but it's not very practical to actually implement it. So you're not likely to see anyone enforcing the STAR security property in your work environment, but you definitely need to understand what threats the model is protecting against and understand these two rules when you take the exam. Remember, Bell Lapagula means no read up and no write down. I hope that this video helped you understand the Bell Lapagula confidentiality model. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.